just want to show you the bowl, taking it a little bit further. Um, it dried out quite beautifully, you can see. I know it looks enormous there, but in actual fact, it's only that size, just on the balloon. But it's quite nice with this sort of rough edge. And <clears throat> the mod rock itself is rather lovely. I think I might leave that as a canvas outside. Um, and I might build this up a little bit more just to give it more depth. But what I've done is I've taken um, the air dried clay. I've already done it, so I'm just going to pretend. And um, I've started from the middle and I've just smeared all the way through. Like that. Just smooth that out again. And what you get is a lovely sort of natural finger um, tip smoothness. And just to check that the air dried clay has gone everywhere, what I've just realised is that if you go with a brush and go over the inside, like that, it will clearly show up, because the air dried clay is so white and porcelain like, it will show up any little bits that you might have missed. I haven't actually missed any, but that's because I've already done this once and I've missed quite a few then. But the um, the Mod Rock shows through a sort of creamy white and the air dried clay is really white white and it's quite smooth. So my intention is to let this dry off, to put a little bit more and tidy up the rim and dry it again, gild the inside and I might paint the outside with um, this paint. It's a French chalk paint and Annie Sloan makes it. And it's gorgeous because it really is chalky. It's fantastic stuff and I've been dying to use it on papier mache. And it's just a sort of off-white. I think it will look fantastic. But before I do that, I'm going to, um, I should have brought them up with me now. I intended to and I forgot. I've made the um, silicon moulds of the little bits of plane tree dingly dangly things and I'll show you next time I'm going, what I intended to do. I think I might put them on in the middle actually, is smear them in the middle. And it, I picked them up in Barclay Square and I picked some up by the Palace of Westminster. So I thought I'd do two bowls, one Barclay Square, a nightingale sang. Um, maybe even just put a little drawing of a nightingale under there and the other one was they were collected by the palaces of Westminster and across the road there's a little tiny medieval tower which is called the jewel tower and it's where a lot of the royal jewels were stored once upon a time and behind it is this lovely um, magnolia tree to take impressions out of and also a plane tree to get little bits of plane leaves. Anyhow, moving on, um, I showed you these two um, bracelets I'd made, one with lumps of mother of pearl and one from, they were from the embankment in London and these are actually, some of them were from the embankment and um, on low tide, some of them were also from Hampstead Heath, where I found quite a lot of little bits and bobs. But what I've been doing, um, was making more of the bracelets just using wet mod rock brand. This is a nice cream tub, letting it dry and then sliding it off. And that's just a very, very basic base. And then what I did, I think I showed you yesterday, is take lumps of air dried clay and press it around the outside and embed things in it. Here I put um, the little mother of pearly Tyvek beads get rid of that light it might make it a little bit easier. I don't know. I think it seems quite there it's probably better. Um, the Tibet beads and little Japanese glass bugle beads, little tiny seed beads and mother of pearl and in this one I just put lots of little beads and then I put another wrapping of the air dried clay around the centre and in, I'm pressed in lots of just silver and kind of graphite black. They are. It looks enormous, doesn't it? But it will work, except for it's still a bit soft because 
what I've done then is, is do the inside, I'll show you. And this one, I have made tiny little um, air dried clay, basically what they are is just little balls of clay which I shove the kebab stick through and then when they dry they're in effect beads and what I've done is I've just pressed them on the on there and then I've glued in tiny little beads inside as well. Reminds me a little bit of a sea urchin that's also got to go back. So this has dried off already this has been put on so I do it in stages so that each stage it gets stronger and stronger and then when it's thoroughly dry what I will do is I will paint resin in hopefully so that not too much so it goes shiny because I want to retain the sort of chalkiness of it but enough to make it strong so what I was doing here was just taking a roll like that and then just pressing it I can show you literally just pressing it in like that and pulling it to the edge as I go. Was that a bead? No, it wasn't, I don't think. But I have lost one of these little that must have dropped off in the drawing cabinet because I hadn't glued them in, I'd only pressed them in at that stage. Now when I've done that I just kind of go press it down the centre. This is the advantage of starting off with the original Modrock bangle which was actually just a bit too big for my wrist because even though I have got quite large hands, um, so I, I, I wear quite large bangles, it's nice to be able to make them smaller and this is one way of adjusting the size. If a little bit of the Modrock pops up like it has done there, and just snip it off and then smooth it all down. It doesn't take long. And smooth it around the edge on both sides. You can always give a little bit of water as well to help smooth it nicely and around the edge. You can just feel it. And uh, there we go. Another bangle. So I have got, I'll show you, tons of these things as well, which I'm making. All these. Oh, there's just so much going on here. Loads and loads of things which I'm going to build up into uh, jewellery now because I've been making these little components on and off now for the last few weeks and I've got loads so now it's time to actually finish it all off. Okay I will catch you tomorrow. Have a nice day. Bye.